welcome to Children's Ministry. It is so great to have you tune in watching Children's Ministry. Thank you so very much. I love you guys, each and every one of you who's tuned in and watching those who of tuning in, maybe for the first time, maybe someone told you the children's ministry. Hi, I'm Angela Robertson. Glad that you're watching, you're tuning in. On this week, we're gonna have a great word from the Lord on today. The message is called Making Promises, Faith Kids. Making Promises. So get what you always do. Get your Bibles, get your tablets, your phones, all that you have the Word of God on. And we're going to get into the Word today that He has for us. I'm praying while you're getting your scriptures ready, your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Matthew. Heavenly Father, we come to thank you for this day, all that you're doing in our lives, God. We thank you, God, that we are studying in your word on today father we thank you that your holy spirit is bringing revelation of truth to us that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened that we will know you god that we were able to serve you more perfectly father as your word goes forth we know it will not return unto you void it shall accomplish all that you have sent it to do god and we give you all the honor the glory and the praise for all that shall be done all that shall be revealed on this day, God. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, faith kids, I know you're there. Matthew chapter 5. So our memory verse is verse 37. So let's go down to verse 37. And then we're going to back it up just a little bit. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. And it reads, just say a simple Yes, I will, or no, I don't. And anything beyond this is from the evil one. I know you're thinking, well, that's a lot. What is he saying? Just, just say a simple yes. Just say, yes, I will do it, or no, I won't do it, and leave it right there. He says that anything beyond those points is is from the evil one. And we're going to talk about what that really means because we want you to meditate upon that memory verse this week and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you to know what God wants you to know from this verse or you apply it to your life. He says just a simple yes and a simple no, whichever one it is. And then anything else, don't add to it, don't do all of this. So we're going to talk about it as we go back up in our verses in verse number 33, what that means. Because we're talking about broken promises, broken promises. So let me ask the question, what is a promise, faith kids? What what does that mean? What is a promise? I know you're probably saying uh, something that you say, something that you do. It is. It's a vow. It's a declaration. Something that you, you know, you make to say, I'm going to do something or I'm not going to do something. I'm going to give something or I'm not giving something. Whatever the case may be, it is a, pro a promise. It's something that you decide, a vow that you're going to do. You are giving your word that I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do that, or I'm going to give this. That's what a promise is. You're making a promise. So let's think about some promises that we make. What are some promises that you have made in your life, fake kids? Have you promised to keep your room clean? Told your parents, ah, oh, if you buy me this, or if you give me this, I'll keep my room clean. Did you make a promise maybe to do all of your chores, do your homework, make better grades? Because we promise all of these things. I know for myself, we promise, you know, we're going to read our, we even make promises to God. Heavenly Father, if you would just get me through this and I'll be at church every week or I'll serve on whatever team and I'll read my scriptures day and night, a chapter in the morning and a chapter in the evening. We make all of these promises. But the thing is, are we keeping these promises? Are we really keeping these promises? So I have something here, fake kids. <laughs> Do a quick example. I have some pasta. And I'm going to see, all right, just as this pasta is, faith kids, it is going to be our promises. These are our promises that we make and that we say, oh, I'm going to do this, or you can have this, or I'm whatever we promise, right? But what happens 
when I break the pasta. Now our promises are broken. And how are they broken? Because we didn't keep our word, right? We didn't do what we said we was going to do, our promise. We didn't keep our promise to whatever it was, whether it was to do our chores, to do our homework, read our Bibles, whatever it was, serve, whatever it was. Now our promises are broken because we didn't do them. Can we put these back together? Not really. We might can, you know, if we could take some time, maybe some tape and glue them back. But mostly we cannot put these promises back together. That's how it is in our lives. Once you vow to do something it, and you don't do it, you have broken your word. You have now said, I, I'm not doing it. I didn't do it. So let's go into the scriptures in verse 33. It reads, you have also heard that an answer that our ancestors were told you must not break your vows you must carry out the vows you make unto the lord those promises that we say god if you and i will and lord if you this this and i will or i won't or i'm not going to do it anymore or whatever we promise god He's, the scripture just told us, just like they told the people before us, our ancestors, don't make a vow and then all you want to do is break that vow. Because what has happened is your word, you have broken your word. Think about it. God says his word will never change, will never fail. You know why? Because he does not break promises. What he says in his word will be true. He's not like us. We say one thing and we mean something else. No. We, our word is our word. The enemy wants to knows that our word is strong and our word should be truthful. When we say a thing, it should be. Because why? We were created, created in God's image. Just as he spoke things and they came into existence, we have that power. He has given us. We were created in his image. So what we speak and what we say will come to pass, faith kids. So we have to make sure that when we're vowing, we're making promises, we stick to them. And then again, let's keep reading. It says, but I say, do not make any vows that do, and do not say my heaven because heaven is God's throne. In other words, you heard maybe someone say, I swear to God, I'm going to do it. I swear to God, it's going to happen. Oh, I swear to God. No, it just told us that we're not supposed to do that. We are not supposed to be swearing, and especially not to God. That means his throne. We're swearing upon his throne. Oh, I'm going to do it. No, we should not be swearing on the throne of God. He says, don't do that. And it goes on to say, and, and do not say by the earth, because the earth is his God's footstool, right? And do not say by Jerusalem, for the Jerusalem is the city of the great king. So it's telling us that all these things, we're not to be swearing. Have you heard people, I swear to God, I know when I was growing up, maybe you've heard it too, that people say, cross your heart and hope to whatever. I'm not saying that word, hope to live, right? Because that was really stupidity, what we used to say, that because I'm going to say this and, you know, and if I don't do it and if it don't happen, then I hope to what? No, that is wrong. No, we do not even have that. We can't change anything. So we should not be swearing and saying, you know, pinky swear or whatever you do that, okay, why are we convincing people that I have to convince you that what I said that I'm going to do it or what I said is true? That means our word is no good. That means the enemy, just like the enemy, he wants, he, he, he's deceitful. He's lying. So if our word is not true, then we're doing one. That's what our memory verse told us. It's the evil one. Because lying and being deceitful, that's of Satan. That is not of God. So God does not want us to swear by anything. When we're prom making promises, he doesn't want us to say, I'm swearing by God or, you know. No, he does not want us to do that. Our word is, should be our word. Keep, let's keep reading, fake kids. It says, do not even say by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. You know, sometimes you'd be like, you know, you swearing on yourself. You can't even swear on yourself. God said you can't even make your hair white or black, nothing. He said, we are not to be doing those things. We are not to be just swearing, putting out, you know, just because and a lot of times we say, you know, I swear to God, or we, you know, make it some kind of religious thing. And maybe we tell people, oh, I'm going to pray for you. And we never pray for them. No, you promise. You just said, I'm going to pray for you. And then that's what you should do. 
pray for them. And we put things on there like to God and all of that. We're trying to make our word have meaning or have value. No, no, we're being deceitful. That's not what we're supposed to do. When we say it, we're supposed to be true to our word. If I say I'm going to pray for you, I'm going to pray for you. If I say I'm going to do a certain thing, I'm going to do a certain thing. If I'm calling you, because a lot of times we say, oh, God, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. And we never call them. We need to be truthful to our word. That's what God is telling us. We have to be as just as here. When we say it, we need to do it. We make a promise. We need to make good on that promise. I don't know if you ever heard of the story of the boy who cried wolf or if you read that story or your teacher may have read you that story, but he kept saying wolves, wolves, and the people were run. There was no wolves. He thought it was really funny. A lot of times we do things just in the humor. But guess what? God's words, he says, the angels hearken unto the voice of his word. So they're listening to what we're saying because they're able to make those things come to pass. They're listening for the word of God. But if we're continuing to make jokes about everything, it's good to laugh. Think, but in certain places, you have to be careful on what we say because the enemy, that's how he comes in, trying to be deceitful and, and fooling us. That, oh, we was just kidding around. No, you need to watch what we say. We talked about that in one lesson, about the words that we speak. So we have to be careful on what we're saying, fake kids. And I know that we joke, but some things we don't joke. So if we say something, then that's is what we should do. We should not have to be, you know, convincing people, oh, it's true, I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And then, you know, the boy who cried wolf, he kept doing it over and over. And then the last time the wolves were there, no one came to help him. Why? Because he had said it so many times and it wasn't true. So he wasn't a person of his word. So now people didn't believe him anymore. So they didn't even come to help because why? He was not being truthful. And when he needed help, he wasn't able to. So if you're always truthful, always doing your word, always doing what you say you're going to do, faith kids. That's what God, that's what honors God. And in our last scripture, it says, just say a simple what? A simple yes, I'm going to do it. Or no, because you keep me, no, no, you're not going to do it. It's okay to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Or no, I can't do that. If, if your parents are telling you, faith kids, something to do or whatever, you're going to do that. But in some, your friends or whatever, and you just tell them, yes, I'm going to do it, or no, I'm not going to do it. Don't be like, okay, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh -huh. No, you don't need to convince them. Your word is true. When you say you're going to do something, then you should do that. If you're going to call them, if you're going to help them study or, or whatever, you're going to read a book, you're going to do your chores, do those things because that's what honors God. That's what pleases Him. That's what He says we are to do. Just give a simple yes and a simple no and make no excuses. You don't have to convince people, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I swear. No, we don't need to swear because what we say, we're going to do because why? We are like our Father in heaven. He says His word will never fail because He said it and it will be true. So we are to be imitators of Him. We are to be like Jesus. What He said, He did. He never told the disciples something that He did not do. If He said He was going to pray for those people, He did that. He prayed for them. If He said He was going to feed them, He fed them. So we too are to live our lives just like that. Let your word be true. A simple yes, a simple no, fake kids, and never have to swear, never try to convince people that you are going to do something or you're not going to do something and do it. And whatever you say, do that, fake kids. So I hope you have had a lesson good on well on today, fake kids. Hope you got a great word out of this. Study your memory verse in Matthew. A simple yes and a simple no. And I will see you next time, faith kids. Be blessed.